So today I'm going to do my best not to confuse you. And I'm going to start off by reading uh, six passages in Revelation that mention the word mark of the beast. Mark, the mark of the beast. And I'm going to tell you that the word mark in the Greek, and you'll see it on your bulletin, it means badge of servitude. Badge of servitude. So I want you to understand something. Everybody listen. Satan is not interested in half-hearted worship. All right? He is going to be so convincing and powerful that people aren't going to have to have anything snuck into them. The people are going to line up excited to follow this false God, this false Christ, this false spirit, this false prophet. And... Uh, it, 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 when you read this passage and I point out things, I think it'll come alive to you that people are going to be so deceived as you look at and look at this, deceived, deceived, deceived. And I believe that the church will not be here during the seven years of great tribulation. So you see in chapter four of Revelation that there's a trumpet and there's a heavenly scene and four and five describes the heavenly scene. In that description of Revelations chapter 4 and 5, the revelation of Jesus 4 and 5, you see there's a lamb that's standing because they couldn't find anybody worthy to open the lamb's book of life. And the lamb is standing representing Jesus has conquered death. He's not laying dead. The lamb of God, Jesus Christ, he's standing. He's alive. He's resurrected. And he is worthy, they say, worthy to open the Lamb's book of life. In other words, the list of those that are eternally saved with God is being opened in heaven in that sight. That means those that are saved have been caught away. If you listen to the sermon on the rapture, it was either last week or I, I don't, can't remember, was that last week? Yeah, well, look at that if you missed it. So, so I tell you that to say that this seven years of great tribulation, as Pastor Gary pointed out last Sunday night, begins with chapter 4. And in 4 and 5, during the seven years of great tribulation on earth where God pours judgment and wrath on those that, that were rejecting Christ, during that seven years, the church is a scene in heaven. So 4 and 5 describes the part of the seven year picture of what's going on in heaven. And then starting in verse 6 is this great tribulation and the horrors that are poured out of judgment. And then right in the middle of two, three and a half year periods, seven years, the Antichrist is going to the temple, rebuilt in Jerusalem and declares himself God and demands everybody worship him. And you're going to see the picture of this mark of the beast and how convincing it's going to be. So I'm going to tell you up front, they're going to build, tell people to build a statue, which is a statue of the Antichrist, of the first beast, because the, there's two beasts mentioned, the first beast, the second beast. And Satan presents himself as God. He's always wanted to be God, and he does it in three persons. Satan, the father, the Antichrist, not the Christ, but the Son. It's going to be a human being that Satan enters, the Antichrist, that, that then this false prophet also called, the false prophet has three names. One of them I'm giving to him. Two of them are in the Bible. The false prophet and the second beast. The first beast is the Antichrist. The second beast is the false prophet. It's a man. and But it acts in serving as an unholy spirit. The second beast, the false prophet, is like the unholy spirit, the third person of the unholy trinity who is fathered by Satan, the liar. Do you see this? Now, has everybody got that? You got three distinct entities trying to be God. Satan's always wanted to be God. And then he enters a man, the Antichrist, called the first beast. And then another one, false prophet that's called the second beast who is like the Holy Spirit only an unholy spirit do you see that so as we read these verses I'm going to read the every verse in Revelation that mentions the mark of the beast and remember the word mark in the Greek means badge of servitude in other words it's not oh I got to take it I guess if I want to eat no it's going to the mark saying I'm proud of this 
In fact, we always think the mark is 666, but when I read carefully, you'll see there's three different marks people can have. And I think it measures three different levels of servitude and devotion towards Satan and the Antichrist. It's motivated by this false prophet, the unholy spirit. So I'm going to start reading those in Revelation 13. And you can make notes. It'd be good. And in your bulletin, I gave you the word, the Greek word that means mark. And, uh, and, and the badge of servitude. And I gave you these verses that mention the mark of the beast. They're in your bulletins. The first one is Revelation 13, 16, and 17. And it says, And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand and in their foreheads. And that no man would buy or sell, save he had to mark, that's one, the mark of the beast, or the name of the beast, or secondly, or the number of his name. See that? The next passage is Revelation 14, 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worshiped the beast in his image and received his mark in his forehead or hand, and the smoke of their torment... Verse uh, number 11 says, that just verse 9, it says, And the smoke of their torment ascends up forever and ever, and they have no rest night or day, who worship the beast and his image. The image is a statue, okay? And later, because he orders them to build a statue, and he makes that statue this unholy spirit, the second prophet, called the false prophet, the second beast rather, called the false prophet. This unholy spirit makes that statue talk and gives power to that statue to kill people. Now you're talking about goofed up, but how goofed up is religion already in our world? You, you, everything from crystal. I mean, there's crazy stuff going on. So he says, and whoever sees the mark of his name. So there's the third thing. Now the next passage is Revelation 15, 2. And it says this. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire and them that had gotten the victory over the beast. In the picture of heaven, heaven is pictured as sea of humanity or sea of glass, picturing the purity that now in heaven in humanity is standing on this sea, this huge, vast number of people that are there. And he sees them mingle with fire and they had gotten the victory over the beast. In other words, they didn't take the, the mark or the image or the name. They got victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name. St they were standing on the sea of glass having the harps of gold. Uh, that's, that's just heavenly. That's just a heavenly picture. They went with it. So some, some people are going to be saved. Later you'll learn that there's 144,000 Jews of 12,000 of each tribe that are sealed and protected that go around as a witness and win people to Jesus. You also see that suddenly the Jewish nation, God's chosen, their eyes will be open to who this Antichrist is and this false prophet is. And they'll suddenly realize, and the Bible says this very clear, they'll suddenly realize that Jesus Christ was their Messiah and there's going to be a great turning to God and to Jesus than the Jews and there'll be people that hadn't heard that come to Christ there'll be uh, there, so there will be people coming to Christ during the seven years of great tribulation but here's the problem those people they're going to pay for their life they can't buy or sell they're going to pay for it with their life to, to, to reject the demand of the unholy spirit to worship that antichrist the false Christ and to bow before Satan himself. You see that? They're going to pay for their life. And so it says it in that verse. They got there. They're in heaven. They, they didn't take that mark. And the next passage is Revelation 16, 2 says, And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worship the image. Don't take the mark, all right? It's a badge of servitude. It's not just something that you get tricked into. You willingly say, I will worship, I will follow, I will serve. And most people are going to be proud, proud of it. And then the next one is Revelation 19, 20. And it says, and the beast was taken and with him the false prophet. See, there's the two. The beast is the first beast. One of the verses says the second beast, that's 
the false prophet, right? The first beast is the Antichrist, and the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet, that's the unholy spirit that wrought miracles. See, the spirit of God moves, God's spirit, there's miracles that happen by the spirit, right? Just the Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead. Remember that? The unholy spirit is doing stuff here that wrought miracles before him, which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. It's this great deception. And them that worshiped his image, they both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Yikes. I don't want to think about anybody I love doing going there. In Revelation 24, and I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. So there we are in heaven and for the word of God, witness of Jesus, the word of God, and which had not worshiped the beast, not the beast, not his image, had not received his mark upon their forehead or in their hands and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So here's the order. The church is taken out, caught up, caught up. Watch the sermon from last week, raptured, caught up, gone. Seven years of great tribulation is on earth when God pours out wrath. During that time on earth, the Christians are gone. They're in heaven having a celebration, the Lamb's Supper. They're celebrating. God's giving out rewards. Some things we did that maybe were more about us than about God, that's likened like dirt or like limbs or, or like leaves. But those that are done unto the Lord for his glory are like silver and gold to receive rewards. So seven years, we're banqueting with Jesus in heaven. At the end of the seven years, Christ comes back on a horse with the saints. And then there's the battle of the Armageddon, which you'll hear about tonight. Don't miss it. That's the topic. And then the battle of Armageddon after that leads into a thousand year reign with Christ on earth. People would be born and it's going to be, uh, uh, I mean, it's exciting if we get raptured. It's going to gonna be good. It's going to be good even if we're not raptured. All right. So everybody got that so far? Are you lost? Am I clear as mud? Okay, just go, go back if I go too fast and listen to it again. I got a lot to tell you. Revelation 13 is our passage, verse 11 to 18, and I'll just read it. And I'm reading in the King James, but I'll change a few words as we go. I've studied mostly the King James, and I believe it to be very accurate, the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ. And I, I beheld another beast coming out of the earth. This is another beast. This is the second beast, not the Antichrist. This may also, so, so coming out of the earth, the word earth there can be translated the land, meaning Israel. I believe that's what it's meaning. So if you're looking at America trying to figure out end times, you're looking at the wrong place. Look at, the, look at the Holy Land. Look at that region. You know, we're having some things happen to us that have been happening around the world all over right now. You, you don't figure out end times by looking at America. We may be mentioned. Some people think we are. We may not be. I don't know. All I know is I'm a believer and I'm going to go to heaven, so I'm not worried about that. A believer first and American secondly. So, so, uh, so and, he, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. In other words, he looks harmless, but he's the devil. And he exercises all the power of the first beast, that's the Antichrist, before him. And causes the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast. Who, who, who do they want to worship? The Antichrist. Who does the Holy Spirit point to? Jesus to worship. Got it? Who is the unholy spirit going to point to? The Antichrist. What is the statue or that which they bow down the, uh, the image of the Antichrist, it's the, it's the Antichrist. That's the, that's, that's the image that people will bow down to and worship. That's the image that, will, that, will, the, that the unholy spirit, the false prophet, will cause to speak and will give power to kill people. Very clear. And then look at this first beast, this Antichrist. Just like Jesus was crucified and died, Satan's got to have his days, like copying God, whose deadly wound was healed. See, point to say, he really is. Look at that. He is healed. He really is the Christ. He's the God. Worship him. And he does great wonders so that he makes fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. Who did that? Elijah. And he deceives them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles. People are deceived. Notice the word deceived which had power to do in the sight of the beast. Those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast. Okay, a statue, an image. 
something, which had been wounded by the sword but lived. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. The statue became alive. That the image of the beast should both speak, the statue is speaking, and cause as many as would not worship this image, the meaning of the Antichrist, image of the beast, that's the first beast, should be killed. And he causes all, both small, great, rich, and poor. They're talking about this is the second beast. This is the unholy spirit making everybody worship the Antichrist, the first beast. And he causes all, small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. That no man might buy or, say, or sell, save, which means accept, except that he had the mark first, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. It doesn't matter what there is. It's like people are going to step up and go, put his name right here. You know, I'm proud of it. I'm, I'm a real servant, you know. Well, I'll take the number right here. I don't want to be so obvious. The anti-tattoo the anti people, they're just going to get it right here on the hand. They don't want it up here, you know. He's going to tattoo people, right? The name, a number, whatever. And so here's wisdom. Let him understand and count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. Notice that number of a man. The Antichrist is a man, and his number is 600, three score, and 666. You know, people thought Ronald Wilson Reagan was the Antichrist. People would say that because he had six letters in each of his first, middle, and last name. That is stupid, stupid, stupid. It's, don't, don't focus on the 666 to figure it out. Focus on the number six. In biblical numerology, one is the number of unity. Two is the number of witness. Send them two by two. Three is the number of God. God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. One God in three persons. Four is the number of earth. It's north, south, east, west. Six is the number of man. And six, six, six is man pretending to be God. It's that simple. It's that simple. And if you get caught up trying to figure that out, what you don't want to do is worship anything but Jesus Christ. Amen. And you don't want to be here when there's great delusion, when the great tribulation starts, that seven years of God's wrath on the earth. You do not want to be here. It's man pretending to be God in three persons. Satan, who is not God, causing two men the Antichrist and the false prophet are what I've titled the unholy spirit. The Bible doesn't call him that, but he does the same work of the Holy Spirit by pointing to the Antichrist, the Christ, like the Holy Spirit points to Jesus, the Christ. You see that? There's two beasts mentioned in the Bible. The first beast, the Antichrist. The second beast is the false prophet. The false prophet serves like the Holy Spirit the unholy spirit in the unholy, ungodly, satanic trinity where Satan is the father and this man is the antichrist that Satan enters and there's been many antichrists on the earth and then where uh, the false prophet is pointing as saying everybody worship this image, worship this antichrist, worship this, worship this, which is what the Holy Spirit does is draws us to Christ, points us to Christ and we worship God in spirit and in truth. The Holy Spirit always exalts Jesus. So this Satan, this man, this false prophet, and the Antichrist, they're going to be Superman. And, and, uh, and, 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 and the word anti means instead of or means against, Antichrist, against Christ or instead of Christ. That's what we're talking about. So you see the unholy trinity. Re Revelation 16, 13 mentions all three of these. Watch. Mark this one down so you don't get confused because there's three, a triune nature of the unholy uh, Godhead. Un, un, uh, satanic Godhead. Okay, I saw three unclean spirits like frog come out of the mouth of the dragon. That's Satan. Out, who wants to be God? Out of the mouth of the beast. That's the Antichrist. And out of the mouth of the false prophet. That's the, at other places called the second beast and also is like, acts like the unholy spirit. So, what is the goal? They're going to come great deception. The sinister minister of propaganda is going to be slick, smooth. It's a man. He's going to be well-spoken. And he's coming to unite the world for one common marketplace with one common currency. He's going to unite the world into a common government, world, one world government. And he's going to unite the world into a common faith. You go, what? A common faith? 
Absolutely, it's already happening. And this, this false prophet is the summer one, a servant of Satan. And I beheld another beast. There's this, when I talk about the second beast, Revelation 13, 11. I beheld another beast coming out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon. Now lambs don't have horns, so you know there's something wrong right here. He has two horns like a, uh, you know, and, and, but he's like a lamb. And he might look like a lamb, but he's got dragon breath. And he speaks like a dragon and he's a liar like his father Satan. And he exercises, the gold verse goes on, he says, and he exercises all power over the, uh, of the first beast before him. He has the same power of the antichrist that Satan has entered and living in. The second beast, this false prophet, the anti-Holy Spirit, is going to be a master of deception, a master of camouflage. He'll appear a harmless lamb, but John says, look for the horns and smell his breath. He's a dragon. He's like his father, Satan. He's a liar, and, of, of, and, uh, and, and, and that's all he'll do. He'll lie. We have lying religion all over the world right now. See, in Christianity too, brother, brother, don't you think it's not? You're talking about messed up religion? How when you have immoral behavior do you, do you ordain those people? Most Christian denominations in America blink and have got the idea that anything goes and that all roads lead to heaven and that all religions lead to heaven. In fact, I was doing street witnessing by questioning and I interviewed these guys and it got down to the fact, they said, well, I believe a lot of things. Well, I believe in this and I believe in that. You know, I believe in crystals. I believe in, I believe in the Big Bang. I believe in this, I believe in that. I go, have you ever read the Bible? No. Have you ever read the Quran? No. I said, have you ever read any religion book? No. I said, well, how'd you come up with what you believe? I said, did you just kind of come up with it like just thinking logically in your head? Yeah, we just kind of figured out what we do believe and don't believe. What does the Bible say? There's a way that seems right to man and the end leads to destruction. But this is what we got all over the world. You got craziness. You can't even believe the things people believe. It's nutty, crazy. Any sane person that's not being demonically influenced could never believe it. Say, so, well, you believe in Jesus. How's that saying? I tell you, I challenge you go to Israel and study history and study uh, archaeology and study geography in the land of Israel. And you go study, you don't need faith to believe. You need facts. And you can't deny the facts. In fact, the Bible says he left undeniable facts and proof of the resurrection of Christ, which is totally proven outside of biblical literature, in historical literature. But you don't have that anywhere else. Every other religion, their God is dead. Go visit their grave. But they're still looking for somebody to come. This, this false prophet that's going to point to the Antichrist is a servant of Satan. And he's like his father. And when Jesus is talking to the unsaved Pharisees, he says, you're of your father, the devil. And John 8, 44, in the lust of your father, you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and he did not abide in the truth because there was no truth in him. And when he, Satan, speaks, it's a lie. He speaks on his own for he's a liar and the father of it. And this devil is a master liar and the lamb that speaks as a dragon will be incredibly, incredibly clever liar. 2 Thessalonians 2.11 2 Thessalonians 2 11. It talks about this seven years of great tribulation and, and for those who rejected the truth when they had the day of grace and it says this for this cause, mark it down 2 Thessalonians 2.11 for this cause God will send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. The NIV has it better, it, the lie. It's literally in the Greek, the lie, believe the lie. What is the lie? Well, when suddenly there's a catching away and Christians are taken out, they gotta have a lie to tell everybody what happened. Well, what are they gonna say? God took all those people out because they were stopping world peace. They weren't with it. They wouldn't shut up. God got sick of it. Everybody knows that all roads lead to heaven. And so the, the clever spirit talking beast image is going to explain everything away. And, and they're going to, this, this antichrist is going to tell the biggest lie you ever heard about what happened to all of us. You know, when the church is gone, things are going to get bad. Ain't no more praying grandmas. Nobody contending for the real truth. So they're going to believe the lie that's told. And it says in Matthew 24, 24, Jesus said this, talking of this. 
Jesus himself said, for there will arise false Christ and false prophets, plural. Now let me tell you, there have always been false prophets and there's always been false Christ. Because the spirit of Antichrist has been in Hitler, you name it, these guys that are ruling. Let me tell you something. Any nation, any dictator, anyone that is stepping over the boundaries and taking away human freedom has the spirit of Antichrist in them around the world and we see it everywhere. Because Jesus came to set us free. The Son has set you free. Freedom is a biblical principle. Do you understand that? You understand that? And I don't care what you believe about what's going on. Now, I've got couples that are mad at each other because one will wear a mask and the other one won't. One will get vaccine, the other one won't. And you need to do your research, do what you're going to do. But guess what? We got something more important that's to give people Jesus. But I don't care what you believe. I personally don't want anyone telling me what medicine to put in my body. Now, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. But I'm not making a statement on what I believe about it. Because I think depending on who you are, it, you know, you do your research and you do what you're going to do. But be kind. Be kind. Okay? And don't let it divide the body. Because we're not about that. We're about Jesus Christ giving hope. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I don't want people divorcing because their husband or their wife won't get the vaccination. And I don't want people divorcing over whether you wear a mask or not. And I'm, it's a lot stressful, okay? I'm just telling you, I don't like it. But I'm going to tell you, do your research and do what's right for you, for your body, and everybody respect each other. But do your research. I want to tell everyone, stay healthy, eat healthy, and take the proper vitamins. Your body is strong. Do, what's, do what the best you can. We've had people that miraculously have beat this. I believe in the power of prayer. You know, if, if, if you know, if uh, I chose to take the vaccine and I have a reason why I did it, none of your business. <laughs> One of them is I'm 68, okay? And some of you think, well, it's gonna kill me. Well, here's the thing, I did the best I could by the Spirit and guess what? Let me tell you something. The Bible says if you step on a snake when you're out doing the work of God and it bites you, it won't harm you. So I'm just trying to do my best, and I'm not trying to tell anybody what to do either way, okay? But I don't want you to be in fear no matter what you've done, whether you have or you haven't. You make a good educated guess on it, or you look into it, and you, you research it, and you do what you want to do. But here's the thing. Respect people. Because even if you're vaccinated, you walk right up to someone, you can give it to them, and you don't know they may have just gone through chemo, right? Or you don't know that they got really bad diabetes, so respect people. If I start backing up, there's a reason. Because I know I can still get it. You come up in my face, you're going to see me doing the moonwalk. <laughs> I don't want it. I already had it once. I don't plan on getting it again. I'm not afraid. I just don't want to get sick. If I die, I die. I go to heaven. If you die, you die. You go to heaven. I'm not worried about you dying. I don't really care if you die. As long as you go to heaven. It sounds bad, doesn't it? But that's the truth. <laughs> if you die, just make sure you go to heaven. That's all I can say. Go to heaven, take as many people with you as possible. That's all I say. All right. Now, if you heard me make a statement for or against the vaccine, I didn't. If you heard me make a statement for or against masks, I didn't. I wouldn't do that in the pulpit. You ask me personally, I might tell you what I think, but I doubt it. <laughs> all right. So Jesus says there's going to be many false Christs and false prophets. And uh, so you see in 2 John 1, 7, it says this. John, who wrote the book of Revelation, also said, he said this, For many deceivers are entered in the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is the deceiver and the antichrist. You see that 2,000 years ago, the guy that wrote the book of Revelation also said there were antichrists on earth. So don't think there's only one antichrist. The spirit of antichrist is here to deceive. It's been going on and it's going on today. And he'll do it in the name of Je Jehovah. He'll do it in the name of any God. He doesn't matter. Just so he gets you off the real truth. He lies and he, the best lie has a little truth in it and he'll do that to you. So, who gives the first beast power? The devil himself. That's who gives it to him. And the second beast, the same. The unholy spirit. The, he's a servant of Satan and he's a worker of worship. 
C 13 12 says he exercised power over the of the first beasts before him and causes the earth of them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed this first beast is the Antichrist remember now what does the Holy Spirit of God cause us to do to worship the Lamb of God Jesus always says he doesn't speak of himself he speaks of Jesus he elevates Jesus he talks about Jesus he points people to Jesus he calls people to Jesus he convicts people to Jesus he does the work of the spirit of the truth of Jesus he is the truth and so first John this is the same John 4 3 says the spirit of Antichrist is already in the world I've told y'all this over and over how plain is that look at it the spirit of Antichrist is already in the world you can see we're headed toward a one world religion and quickly. Have you noticed that? Revelation, Revelation 13, 12, but he causes all of them that dwell on the earth to worship the first beast. This is why I believe in pre-trib rapture. Because if you're on the, in the earth during the seven years of great tribulation, he's going to make you worship the beast. That's what he's going to do. He's going to deceive you. Or he'll kill you if you don't. I don't want to be here. You guys can stick around. I'm sticking with pre-trib but like I said, pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, it'll all pan out in the end. Pastor Austin said it's pan-trib, so it's okay. I'm not going to die on that cross. So anyway, but look at this. You're talking about Satan, Isaiah chapter 14, 12 to 14. He's talking about, and I'll just change a few words to make it easier to understand. How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? That's Satan, the son of the morning. How are you cut down to the ground? You, you, you weaken the nation, you that weaken the nations. For you said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also up on the mount of the congregation. That's meaning in the sides of the north. That's talking about, that's where Jesus Christ is going to be. And I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Now notice the next phrase, and I will be like the most high. That's Satan's goal. He's always wanted to be God. A crazy man. Satan, he's, a, he's an evil fallen angel. His job was to worship God and he didn't want to give it to God. He wanted to be God. You know, when Satan tempted the Lord Jesus Christ to worship him, can you imagine the unmitigated gall, the unmitigated audacity to try to tempt the Son of God to worship you? That's what Satan did, Luke 4. It says in verse 5, And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this power will I give you and the glory of them, for that has been delivered to me. In other words, he had the power to give him the kingdoms of this world because who lost it? Adam and Eve. The Bible says Satan is the prince and power of the air. He's the ruler of this world. That's why all evil things and bad things come from Satan. All good things come from God. Simple. He's the power of this air. We just are part of this world. We're not, we're not the world. We just live there as lights and darkness. So that's the filthy ambition of Satan to be like the most high God. And so I, I you know, he's a, he's a worker of worship. He's for worship. And Jesus said to him, you should worship the Lord your God and only him should you serve. And that was his answer. Well, how does Satan, the unholy spirit, get one world religion and get everyone to worship him? Here's, here's what's going on in our world. You hear a lot about new age. You hear about new world leader who's going to come. And to the Christians, we're looking for Jesus to reign and rule for a thousand years. We're looking for Jesus to come. That's the good thing. To the Jews, they're still looking for their Messiah because they haven't accepted Jesus, most of them, as their Messiah. And to the, to the Muslims, they're looking for their Mahdi to come. They're looking for him. And for uh, the, Christ, the Hindus, they're looking for Krishna to come. And to the Buddhists, they're looking for the fifth Buddha to come. So everybody's looking for a man who's going to come, who's just going to blend everything together. He's going to homogenize everything. And, and we're going to have one world that all worships the same beast in one religion. G.K. Chesterton, who was correct, he's a great theologian when he said this, when people cease to believing in the biblical God, they do not start believing in nothing. They do not start believing in nothing. They start believing in everything and anything. The only true God is the God of this Bible, of Father Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Now here's what's going on in the world. Muslims are working together to bring about a one world religion, but they in the end want to be that one, everyone to devote to their way. There's a group called the Muslim Christian Alliance and it's been around for years and they've been working on this and it's happening right now. 
There was a Muslim Christian Alliance book that was called that. It's published in Turkey. And, uh, it, and, it, and it's working on this alliance between Muslims and Christians and Jews. And so here's, I'm quoting from it. Here's what it says, the booklet. Moreover, the saying of the prophet Muhammad states that in the end, end of time, true, pious, devout Christians will unite with Muslims to put a great fight together against the common threat, which is atheism. Slick, huh? For, uh, for the time being, for the time being, true devout Muslims must unite not only with their co-religionists, colleagues, and fellow brothers, but also with true Christians, with true Christian believers by skipping any dispute since they have to unite urgently against this common enemy of atheism. Here's what he's saying. Look, Muslims, forget the difference between Christians and Muslims. Let's unite against atheism. But here's the rest of it. Here's what it goes on and says. Eventually, Christianity, Christianity will be purified and will get rid of all their superstitions and misbeliefs and will unite with the true Islamic religion and will be, in a way, transformed into Islam. And by adopting guidance to the Quran, the Christian community will become a follower of Islam and the Islamic religion will be the leader in the world religion. The true religion of Islam will, great, will gain great power as a result of that unification. So you see what's happening? We'll get Christians and Muslims and Jews together to fight against atheism. Then we'll make the Islamic faith take over Christianity and everything else so that everybody worships Allah. You know, there's articles right here. I've got them. Right here. Got one here, one here. In Omaha, there's this new phrase called Chrislam. It's been around for a number of years. It's part of this group. In Omaha, they're building a building out in the country that's going to house Jew, Jewish worship, Christian worship, and Muslim worship. And this is their philosophy, exactly what I read. We're together. All roads lead to heaven. None of them lead to heaven. It's happened already in Germany, and it's happening in uh, uh, Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. It's happening there, which is a part of the United Arab Emirates. So that's where we're headed. The whole unholy spirit is pointing to the first beast saying he's the Christ and he's going to be a servant of Satan, a worker of worship and a master of miracles. And he's also going, going to be a master of miracles. And I'm like out of time. Notice the miracles that he, we've already read about. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians 2, 9, and I'm skipping down to one, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. He's going to lie. The things that are happening are all lies. He's a master of miracles. And so we've already talked about the image coming alive and talking and having power to kill people that won't bow down to the Antichrist, the first beast. So how do you know if someone's truly God? Well, first off, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, Believe, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try or test. That means try, test the spirits where they be of God. So how do you do that? Well, it talks about in 2 John chapter 1, 7, it says many deceivers have gone out into the world. Those who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is the deceiver and the antichrist. Not meaning the end time, but an antichrist. And so... Do they believe that Jesus Christ is God and has come in the flesh? If not, don't believe the miracles. Check it out. Use discernment. Try it by the Spirit. Secondly, there's a message of prophecy or sign that they glorify Jesus because the Holy Spirit always points to Jesus. That's the second test to know. John 16, 13. How be it when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he'll show you things to come. He shall glorify me. And then the third test is, does it violate the clear teachings of God's word? In Deuteronomy chapter 13, write it down. There is a warning about this. And it says this, if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign of the wonder comes to pass, and what he spake unto you saying, he says, let us go after other gods which you've not known and let us serve them. You shall not hearken to the words of that prophet. 
There's going to be judgment for that guy if they take you away. See how miracles don't prove someone's of God. Satan has power to do miracles. Do you understand that? So he's a servant of Satan, a worker of worship, a master of miracles, and last, he's the controller of commerce. We read in 13, Revelation 13, 16 to 18, unless you got the mark or the name or the number of this beast, you can't buy or sell, and he's going to control commerce. There's going to be a one world, one world commerce, and that's what's about to happen. The world is going to turn into one big concentration camp with the inmates numbered, and everyone will have a mark in there. Going to, if they're going to have to have a mark to have any commerce. It's going to be a brand of hell. And again, if we believe Jesus Christ, if we're sealed by the Spirit, we're not going to be here. We're going to, if not sealed by the Spirit, we're going to be marked by the devil. And I don't want to be marked. I hope you're not either. So seven is the number of perfection. Oh, man was created on the sixth day. The number of man is six. Seven is the number of perfection. God rested. God is perfect. And the mark of the beast, 666, is a man pretending to be God. Don't receive it. Don't take the badge of servitude to anybody else but Jesus Christ. Will you bow your head? If you need Jesus Christ, you want Jesus Christ to be your Lord. You want to be saved. God wants to save you. The sands of time are running out. Bow your head and close your eyes at online too. Listen to me. Even if Jesus doesn't come back for 150 years, you're only a heartbeat away from hell if you don't really know Jesus. But God wants to save you from the power of sin and he wants to save you from the penalty of sin, which is eternal separation from God. God wants you to be with him in heaven. He gave Jesus because he loved you so much so you could have transformation. He comes into your heart to change your heart, to change your thinking, to change how you feel about everything, to see things God's ways. And only Jesus, by His Spirit, can change your heart. Jesus died on the cross to pay your debt of sin with His blood. They've been paid for. Jesus paid for them if you'll just accept Him by faith. you got to repent and turn from your sin and cry out to Jesus, save me and forgive me. And I ask, would you like to do that? Would you pray a prayer like this? And if you would, pray it sincerely to yourself. Dear God, Dear God, I'm sincere right now. I know you love me, God. You gave Jesus to save me. And I know that you want to save me, Jesus. You died to save me. You promised to save me if I trust you. And I do trust you right now. With all of my heart, I receive you into my life. Come into my life and change me. Come into my heart today. Come into my heart to stay. Forgive my sin, Jesus. Cleanse me. Save me, Jesus. Save me, Lord, I pray.